And now an example. There were 1,000 rabbits on an island at the start of 1995, and 3,000 rabbits five years later. I always underline the important parts. They're reproducing exponentially. That tells us that we can use one of these equations of this sort. A, show that this equation satisfies the differential equation dp dt equals kp. Now, nearly all of these questions in the HSE start with this part. And this is easy to do, so make sure you know how to do this, because you'll almost certainly see it a lot. We need to start, we're showing this. So start with the left-hand side. The left-hand side equals dp dt, which is the change in the population with respect to time. And that equals, well, can we sub in here a value for p? Yes, we've been told what p is, it's equal to all of this. So I'm going to sub it in where the p is. Now remember that we can write that we're going to d dt something. Well, we're really d dt, in other words, differentiating with respect to time. We're d dt in p. And what is p equal to? Well, it's equal to all of this. So I just put this in brackets and say, this is the stuff that we have to differentiate with respect to time. Now on the next line, I'm actually doing the differentiation. So I don't need to write that I'm going to do it. I just do it. I bring the k down the front. And then I have to rewrite the rest of the index expression like that. And then, of course, all of this part equals p. We know because that was given to us. So we can now sub in p there. And that is now equal to the right-hand side. Now, you need to have all of these steps. And because it's a show that question, we know that dp dt is equal to kp. We were given that. So then the lines of working that you need will be both of these. And you're proving that you know how to differentiate this by bringing the k down and then subbing in that value to give you the p. Okay, for part b, we need to find the values of p0 and k and then sketch p as a function of t. Now, we were actually given the number of rabbits at the very start of this experiment. So we can actually just state that p0 equals 1,000, but we need to also prove it. Um, and so I would write the sentence because when time equals zero, in other words, in 1995, the population, well, we know the population was 1,000, so we can put that in for p, and we can write p0 times e to the power of zero, and this is one. Therefore, p0 must be 1,000. Okay, now we need to find the value for k. Now we'll need to use this clue that five years on, there were 3,000 rabbits. So I'm going to write when t equals 5, p is 3,000. So now I have a better formula for the population. I know that this p0 is actually 1,000. So therefore, 3,000, that's the population, when the time is 5, equals 1,000, that's p0, times e to the power of k, times 5. So I'm going to write that as 5k. All right, we've got a little equation here to solve. So easiest thing to do to get this part by itself first is divide both sides by 1,000. So dividing this side by 1,000 gives me 3. And now I've got e to the power of 5k. Now retell this as a log. So I've got e to the power of 5k is equal to 3. So then k itself, we need to just divide both sides by 5. So you can write it as 1 fifth log e3, or you could write it as log e3 over 5. You could even use the power law to bring this up, but I think that's nice and simple. So I've got both of my answers there. I'll put them in a box so it's nice and clear. Now at this point, I would put k into my calculator. I potentially even write down a rough value for this so that I know what I'm working with. So if I've got, um, let's go, 0.2 times the log, natural log of 3, then I get 0.2197, etc., etc., let's say to four decimal places, but I now put shift store A. And now that number says answer equals A. Later when I want to use A, I can hit alpha A, and that number will come straight back up again but I still need to sketch p as a function of t. So let's look at the formula for p. We've got 1,000 e 
to the kt, but we know what k is now. So now we can actually write it as a function. k was 1 fifth log, natural log of 3, multiplied by t. So that's now the formula that we're working with. Now, what's this going to look like? Well, it's going to have an exponential shape. We've got p here and t down here. We know that if this is the rabbit population over time, then at the five-year mark, we know we have 3,000 rabbits, so let's put that in. And we know that at the start, we have 1,000 rabbits. So we're starting there, and we're finishing here. Now, the rabbits are growing exponentially. Their population is growing exponentially. So we need to just make sure we have one of these basic sorts of exponential shapes on our curve, and that's literally all the information that you need to put on it. It's clear to see that the five lines up with the 3,000, and away we go. Now, I'm going to leave my equation for the population up there so that I can use it for later parts. You could write it like this where you've put your value for k in, or you could write p equals 1,000 e to the kt, where k equals, and then write the messy expression that you've got there, down. Now remember, we've already got that stored in our calculator. So for C, we need to find how many rabbits there were eight years after the start. So in other words, when T equals eight, what was the population? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and plug it into here. I've got 1,000 E, and time is eight. So I've got 8K. Now I could write eight lots of 1 fifth natural log 3, but by writing it like that, I know that I've already got my k stored, and I can literally just write 1000 times e to the power of 8, and then I put in alpha a, and it'll look like that, 1000 times e to the power of 8a, and my answer will come out as 5799, oops, it's dodgy. 0.54. Now, always relate back to what this means. This goes on and on. 5, 4, 6, blah, blah, blah. We're talking about rabbits here. We can't have 0.546 of a rabbit. So, to the nearest rabbit, let's round this up. Therefore, there are, and let's say, 5,800 rabbits. And if you want to write that you've put to the nearest rabbit, that's fine, but just make sure your answer makes sense. You don't want to have a part of a rabbit because that won't make any sense at all. Now for part D, I need to find the month and year when the population is going to exceed 10,000. So I need to take my formula for population, I'll use the simple version that doesn't say what K is, even though I do know what it is, and I need to find when that population is going to be bigger than 10,000, and now solve this for T to see when it's going to happen. All right, starting off, let's divide both sides by 1,000 so that we can get this part by itself. So that means e to the power of kt has to be greater than 10. Now, a couple of different ways you can go from this point. You can take the natural log of both sides, like this. And then here we've got a natural log base e, and we've got an index expression also base e. That means that kt has to be greater than the natural log of 10. Now to find the time on its own, we just have the natural log of 10 divided by k. So putting that into your calculator, natural log of 10 divided by alpha a, and remember each time I'm using my a there so that I don't have to find it all over again, and it shows that the time has to be greater than 10.479, etc. years. Now, 10 years, that means that we're going to be in 2005. Now, if I subtract 10 from this number, that'll tell me the decimal part of a year that I have. Now, how many months are there in a year? Let's just work roughly here and multiply that by 12. We're going to be five and a bit months through. So think this part through carefully. January, February, March, April, and May will have passed. That's five months that have gone. And we're going to be into that next month, which is June. So that's my answer. Now, back at this stage here, there's a few other ways that you could have gone. You can solve it so that e to the power of kt is equal to 10, and then just reason through, you get this answer exactly 10. t equals 10.47, instead of t is greater than. That prevents you from having to deal with signs, because of course there's a potential issue that could have happened here. If you're doing a decay question, and k is actually negative, 
then when you divide by k, you have to flip the sign, and you might forget. So it's not silly to work with an equals sign. Get to your answer, and then just think what makes sense. These rabbits are growing, so do I want the time at that or above it? And for the context of this question, it really wouldn't have mattered if you'd found that the time was equal to a certain thing, because we had to think about what that meant anyway. Now for the last question, we need to find the rate of population increase at the start of 1997. Now don't forget that the rate, that is dp dt. That's what we're looking for. And when are we looking for it? We're looking for it when t equals 2. Now we already know that dp dt is going to be equal to kp. So we know what k is, we've got that. So we need the population after two years, which is going to be 1,000, just plugging into our, our formula here, e to the 2k. Now I've left my formula with the k's in it because it's just quicker and easier to write. And if you've made it very clear at the start of your working that you know what k is, then you can just go ahead and make these calculations using your recall button. So I've got k times 1,000 times e to the power of 2k. And each time I've used k there, I've just used my a. And I get 340.975, etc., etc. Now, think what this means. What's the rate of population increase? Well, that's the change in population over time. This is in rabbits. So let's round it to the nearest rabbit and say, at the start of 1997, was it? Yes. The population is increasing by let's say 341 rabbits per year. Now that rate is changing all the time. The next day even it would be slightly different, wouldn't it? But exactly when t equals two, that's our rate of increase.